air powers face a new set of challenges today that we haven't had to worry about for quite some time. Uh, the first is that there's an evolving set of threats that we have to contend with. The other is that we have a shrinking uh, global footprint. Back in World War II, the Air Force had approximately, you know, plus or minus 90 overseas bases. Now that number is down to about 33. So we have fewer locations from which we can project combat power. So the idea with ACE is uh, rather than relying on our traditional main operating bases as hubs for projecting air power, we want to think about how can we improve the survivability and resilience of air power by shifting the generation and sustainment and, and um, maintenance of air power from networks of distributed operating locations. The importance of ACE is to be unpredictable to the enemy so that we are not house and operate solely out of one location. So we have taken over um, the Savannah CRTC, utilizing that as our FOSS. And then underneath the Air Expeditionary Wing Commander, we have seven other bases within the region here that are acting as our base cluster bases. So why are we practicing ACE in the most austere locations, um, especially when it comes to F-35s landing, refueling, and taking off? The reason that we're doing that is to prepare to go to any location to fight any kind of threat um, that is going to be detrimental to our national security, any place, any time. To be agile, it you know, requires us to be nimble. It requires us to have a light footprint. We aren't going to take all of Burlington and move it someplace. We need to take a small team and set up shop and generate air power. To be able to do that, to realize that vision means that each of those airmen that are going to be on one of those transports going somewhere uh, need to be able to do a variety of different things because the more people there are, the less agile we can be. And so the whole intent with MCA is to both promote a mindset of being multi-capable, to realize that I can do more than one thing, and then also complement uh, that idea with the formal training that's going to be required to be able to do things outside of your core Air Force specialty. Uh, it feels great to be in this exercise because I know this is where we are leaning to go as a unit or as an Air Force. It's been good to uh, help people do things that are pretty much outside of our career field and outside of what we do back at home in an effort to kind of lead the charge into what the next level of combat is going to look like. Uh, here we are building up from a bear base, providing security at what we consider a uh, contingency location. So essentially what Security Forces does is we uh, detect, deter, uh, defend against any threats. That's essentially what we're here to do. We're here to cover the six of everyone working behind us to generate those sorties, to generate that combat air power. Well, we are in the lovely North South Carolina um, the airfield that we're currently located at is called North Ox, but we are essentially in the middle of nowhere in North South Carolina, where we have a completely deserted and flat airfield with no other support but other than your military members that are behind me. So when we first landed, there was nothing here. Um, we uh, had to help set up tents with CE and other career fields, so that was quite the experience getting to work with other people. Just pulling security, making sure that everybody can perform their job as necessary and as long as we do ours, the base is secure. So when the pilots are on the ground, you have two ways of refueling a jet. Um, either they, they hot pit it, where the maintainers are the ones that are going in, plugging in the fuel while the aircraft is still on, or they can do it when the aircraft shuts down as well. And then farping is when you add in another asset, not a POL truck, but an actual aircraft to come in and do the refueling on the ground. We had a lot of good communication with the pilots in terms of what to expect while they were out there. And while they got to the jet, they also, the maintainers had good comms with the, the personnel that were on the C-130 to kind of help figure out how to FARP with the F-35s. So it's good training for our F-35s to learn how to FARP or refuel on the ground with a, another refueler platform, but it's also good for them to learn how to work with us on the ground opposed to in air because they are very different operations. Everything that we are doing now is all towards building readiness, building capability, building capacity to get after that high-end fight. When your airmen are out there, 
in uh, uh, chemical and, and uh, biological protective gear to generate aircraft and get them off the ground when they are dispersing out to forward operating locations to figure out how to generate air power away from home station. That is contributing to campaigning, that is contributing to deterrence. And so I think it's vital to realize that everything they do is connecting to those uh, larger strategic objectives that we have in the Air Force.